Hi, I'm Patrick Reynolds. And have you ever had a customer that just became a really good friend over time? This is a story about a guy who collects not only my work, but he also collects really, really expensive uh, old masters. And he trusted me to repair one of his frames that fell off the wall and almost hit him in the head. But it enclosed a $100,000 piece of art by James Hope. Now, what I'm gonna do is repair this frame from the broken pieces and manufacture pieces that were missing and re-gild. So, bear with me, and this is gonna be a fun ride. Okay, this is some of the rubber that I used to manufacture some of the pieces that fell off and were practically unsavable. So, rather than making a whole video on just manufacturing new pieces I'm just going to show you the, the basics now here I have some of my ingredients for my gilding kit and I just have uh, my silver and gold leaf which is which is the real thing it's uh, it's actual gold and actual silver so what I'll do is I'll place little bits and pieces on on the, the wax paper that comes with it. And my, my brush has a little bit of Vaseline on it. That helps it to slightly grab it and not fold it. So I can just slide it off onto a piece of, of, the, of the frame, but not to gild it completely. I'm, try, I'm not trying to give it a facelift. I'm just trying to make certain parts of it look as though the gold is being exposed and showing its age. And I want to make sure that it shows its age because I didn't get this frame to make it look like a spray painted brand new frame. So this in itself is so time consuming because I'm, I'm painstakingly getting little bitty pieces one at a time and I'm placing them usually on the highlights of the frame. Then I'll take some of the, uh, the paint that I mix and usually I'm trying to make a dirty color, a color that's going to fade to the background. So I'm adding black to raw umber usually. Sometimes I'll get some burnt umber. And I'll mix those together just slightly and, and use the, my scrumbling brush, I call it. And I very, very lightly put this dirty paint, which I call, into the crevices. And what this does, it makes the crevices seem to be even deeper in showing the details of the highlights. And those highlights had gold leaf on them. So I'm painting over the gold leaf and the little crevices throughout the whole piece, which I will later wipe away. Now, of course, wiping it is a whole nother form uh, because you have to do it very, very lightly. You cannot just start scrubbing in there. You have to ever so lightly dab it like this and ever so lightly wipe over the top, but not super hard. Because I'm just removing just enough paint to make it look as though you're seeing the, the shiny gold that was once there maybe over a hundred years ago. So trying to avoid the facelift look, <laughs> I've done the whole rail here, just dabbing back and forth. Uh, add paint, remove paint, add paint, remove paint, over and over until I have these almost sparkles throughout the whole piece. Now I have back into my secret kit of different things, charcoal. That is something that is kind of an underground thing. Not many people know about it. And this is a process of aging as well. I'm ever so lightly shoving this grungy charcoal into the crevices it's something that paint cannot do. Paint can't duplicate this. So what I'm doing, I'm getting the grunge brush again, 
and I ever so lightly shoved this charcoal into the tiny, tiny crevices throughout the frame and then again wipe it away. So the paint on the frame is slightly wet still. It's not totally dry. So what I wipe away will come off. But as it dries, all the residue from that black charcoal in the crevices will actually stay. And that's what gives the illusion of just years and years of, of wear and memories. So I do this primarily on the bottoms because it's uh, kind of in the shadows. It's where people have never cleaned before probably. So, and it also again brings out all the highlights and all the subtle details. Okay, I flipped it over and now there's a couple little spots in the corners that over time I guess the wood has taken a little bit of a shrinking. So I'm going to do some filler in these tiny tiny crevices on the edges. Now what I have, what I'm going to be using is gilt cream or gilding cream and it's a it's like a heavy wax and but it has gold in it. And what I do is I take little chunks of it like this and I start slightly shoving it into these little tiny cracks. In other words, if there's a little bitty crack, I can take some of this cream and shove it in there. And with the heat of my thumb, I can slowly warm that up where it'll take shape inside that crevice. And it really makes a big, big difference. Okay, now that the frame has finally been prepared, I got it on the table and I have all the edges squared away to where when I place the piece inside all of these corners there's a slight flat piece of felt tape that will keep the oil paint and the wood ever so slightly separated in order for the, to keep the the paint and the wood from ever fusing together over time so here's the piece itself and take him off the easel I've already verified this is not a counterfeit, it's the real thing. And you can also look at the back. And the frame itself was manufactured in London. This particular piece of canvas was stretched in Scotland in the mid 19th century. And again, this is an original James Hope. And I've, I've looked it over and there, there's virtually no no serious inclusions in the entire piece at all so what I'm gonna do now is place it inside the frame and then I'm going to once it's in I'm going to make sure that it stays in with these little metal tabs these will go between the painting and the frame itself screwed down ever so slightly but I'm gonna have a lot of them so there won't be any one that's putting a lot of pressure on any part of the piece. So, here we go. All right, now that we have the piece set inside, it is literally inside of the frame, just setting in like this. Now, what I've done is make sure that the majority of the surface is on the bottom of the frame because as it's hanging for years it will slightly be pulled to the bottom because of gravity now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start at the top here's a little tab I'm going to put it right on the top here I've already pre-drilled holes into this wood the wood like I say it's mid 19th century so it's been around for a few few years and when I tighten this down with the screwdriver I'm gonna make it to where as soon as the screw hits the top of the metal I'm give it a half a turn and that's it that should hold that so what I'm gonna do is spread out the pressure throughout the entire piece all the way around once that's done we'll be right back 
Okay, I finally have her in the frame, back together. And this is the final piece, and I tell you what, it's been quite a joy, and I'd like to thank the owner of this piece for allowing me to be a part in the preservation of this piece of history. Now, lastly, I just wanted to emphasize that I did not completely re-gild the frame to make it look like a brand new frame. What I was doing is simply repairing the, the age and the wear of the existing frame. So there's, there's, it's not like a, a refurbishing from, from scratch back to a brand new frame. So this is exactly how it should look without any broken pieces or heavy damage. So here she is, the original James Hope. Thank you guys so much.